durability is the ability of the structure to last. So what we do is we take the um, design criteria and we look at that uh, along with materials used, the construction processes, and then we pull that all the way through into maintenance requirements to make sure that this structure is going to last the, for the use for many, many years. Um, the structure is set to, uh, is scheduled to last about 125 years, so they'll be doing um, regular maintenance, they'll be choosing materials that will work well um, with things that we see in our environment. So for example, we do a lot of de-icing, um, so we have all those salts and th th those, those create chemical reactions and, and uh, deteriorate the material we use to build these structures. Also, we anticipate that this structure will have um, quite a bit of traffic, so that it has to withstand all of that. So a P3, the way that it is presented here um, for the Gordie Howe International Bridge Crossing, ha has um, placed that responsibility of creating the durability plan onto the, uh, the builders, the designers, and, and our project partner. So what they have to do is they have to take all of these requirements that we have set, for example, the structure is intended to last 125 years. They have to take into account that some of these elements that make up the bridge really don't have that kind of lifespan. So th they have to plan out when these things need to be replaced and they have to follow specific, um, they have to follow specific patterns and set out maintenance schedules to make sure that they can um, assure that the structure is going to withstand the 125 years. Durability um, attacks all parts of this project. So th there will be a durability plan um, the, uh, that, that they have to use to develop for the structure itself. They have to develop a durability plan for all of the buildings. Um, all of these things will be presented in different stages for review um, to the experts and to the Windsor Detroit Bridge Authority. They, they then will be implemented into an operations and maintenance plan. So for example, if you think about things like your HVAC unit, um, that, that has some durability to it, that has some required regular maintenance. If you don't do that regular maintenance, you don't receive the life that the um, element is expected to have. This, this project uses a performance-based um, operations and maintenance term. What they do, what that means is we've looked at all of the elements required as part of the project as a whole. So we've looked at elements that are responsible for the bridge, for the traffic crossing, for the tolling, for the buildings themselves, the HVAC, and we've looked at the typical lifespans of these elements. We've also looked at the regular maintenance. So. So when we have those, that information, we can put together some performance requirements. So basically what that means is our intent is to have a crossing that is, is well maintained, that is easy to access, that, that is safe and effective for the traveling public. So we've used those to put them into performance measures that have now become the responsibility of, of our partners to um, produce and to assure that they have met these requirements. Uh, this is a 30-year term, so there's a lot of checks and balances along the way, and all of this information is presented to uh, the Windsor-Detroit Bridge Authority for review and oversight. They have the ability to come in and do audits and inspections and check up on things if they think things aren't working right. But ultimately, these projects, these P3 projects this way, th they kind of are a self-monitoring, self um, performing type contract. So typically there's an oversight. And in this instance, the high um, traffic and the high demand for the crossing, if something isn't working right, people are going to call and tell us. I think the way that this contract is presented to the public, this crossing is going to be the greatest crossing on the northern border.